Welcome to California State University Bakersfield 2021 Graduate Study Summit. My name is Deborah Jackson, and I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Luis Vega, Professor of Psychology and Interim Associate Dean of Graduate and Undergraduate Studies. He will be moderating session one. Dr. Vega, please turn on your camera and say hello. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Hello, everyone. We're excited to have eight alumni from CSUB graduate programs who have generously agreed to share their experiences with us this morning. First, please welcome Estrella A. Marosa Jefferson, who graduated from CSUB with a Master's of Arts degree in Spanish. Ms. Amaro Jefferson, please turn on your camera and say hello. Hello, good morning, everyone. Please welcome Dion Donahue, who graduated from CSUB with a Master's in Public Administration degree. Mr. Donahue, please turn on your camera and say hello. Good morning, everyone. Next, please welcome Dr. Rabia Sohel, who graduated from CSUB with a Master's of Science in Healthcare Administration and a Doctorate in Educational Leadership. Dr. Sohel, Sohel please turn on your camera and say hello. Good morning, everyone. Please welcome Cover Gabao, who graduated from CSUB with a master's so degree in social work. Mr. Gabao, please turn on your camera and say hello. Hello, everyone. Please welcome Dr. Greg Gordon, who graduated from CSUB with a master's science degree in geology. Dr. Gordon, please turn on your camera and say hello. Good morning, thank you for having me today. Uh, please welcome Tra Traco Matthews, who graduated from CSUB with a master's of business administration degree. Mr. Matthews, please turn on your camera and say hello. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here, thank you. Uh, next, uh, please welcome Jennifer Paulson, who graduated from CSUB with a Master's of Arts degree in history. Ms. Paulson, please turn on your camera and say hello. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And last but not least, please welcome Denise Silva, who graduated from CSUB with a Master's of Science degree in Counseling Psychology. Ms. Silva, please turn on your camera and say hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for being with us this morning. Let's jump right in. What motivated you to choose to go to graduate school? Mr. Gabao, would you like to start? Uh, so um, it was a, a long, I, I didn't join, the, I didn't go to college right after high school. I joined the military first. And uh, honestly, I didn't think college was for me. It, it, it wasn't there in the books until um, I found it very difficult and uh, in a very co competitive um, job market. And so I was, I was talking to uh, an alumni from Bakersfield and basically they said, hey, you know what? Um, why don't you get your master's degree since you can't get a, get a, um, a job with your bachelor's because of the competition? And so I thought about it. I thought about it and I thought about it some more. And um, I was really convinced that, you know what, this is, this is not a bad idea. So I applied and I got in. That's pretty much how it started. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Paulson. Absolutely. Um, much like Hobert, like I didn't go to college right out of high school. I was in um, a relationship. So I just jumped right into work and that. And it wasn't until uh, the birth of my son that I really was evaluating our circumstances. And I had already been wanting to become a teacher for a very long time. And I decided that that was the time. So complete life change, jumped into education, uh, fell in love with it, fell in love with history and really wanted to you know, teach that to students, this new perspective on our history and engage in those conversations because it's just so much fun to me. And so I would say what motivated me is myself and my son. It's it's such a great and rewarding um, career that I'm very much looking forward to. And the master's program at CCB was forever life changing for me. That's great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Treyko Matthews, please. Yes, no, this, this is a great question. And one that I've been asked often by peers and, and students that I've had the pleasure of teaching at CSUB and um, in the community. And 
similar to Aubert, it was a long journey for me. I, I did go to college right after high school, but my experience was terrible. <laughs> I crawled to the finish line and um, really through that experience kind of came to the conclusion that maybe I wasn't college material after I had gone to, to college. <laughs> and so um, I always wanted to learn and grow, but I was honestly just reticent and um, kind of shell-shocked after that undergraduate experience at a different college. This was not CSUB. Um, and so my wife went to grad school and, and she was actually working on her PhD already. And I was like, you know what? It, it's time for me to consider this. And I had three specific reasons that I landed on for what motivated and drove my decision. And the, the first was, you know, it's a value, a personal value of mine to continually learn and grow. And I thought, what better way than to do it formally in, in a, you know, educational institution, um, because it, it helped to drive the second point, which was credibility. I was working in corporate America, and I, I realized that without a graduate degree, a lot of things that I wanted to lead and, and where I wanted to influence, people just didn't uh, give my voice the same level of cachet and credibility that, that I sought. And I thought um, a, an MBA, a master's, a graduate degree would help in that space. And then finally, it was the networking piece. And so my undergraduate experience, I, I never really felt like I belonged. It was not family. <laughs> they still ask me for money every year and I don't give them anything. Um, but I do donate to CSUB because I, I got that experience. And um, that was what I was looking for was a local network of professionals um, where we could work as a cohort and, and, and effect change in this community together. And so those are the three reasons why I decided to uh, pursue not just a graduate degree, but specifically a graduate degree at CSUB in this community that I love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is this, what were the most difficult aspects of your graduate school experience and how did you handle them? Ms. Amaro Jefferson, would you like to respond first? Yes, thank you. Um, so surprisingly, the most difficult aspects of my graduate school experience were things that were outside of school. So I had a hard time doing self-care and having a work-life balance. I would try to work at all hours. Um, I also had family members for whom I was a primary caretaker. And then additionally, I had a two-year-old daughter. So, you know, I wouldn't make time to eat as many vegetables as I should or exercise or practice one of my hobbies like uh, you know, sewing or music. Um, and that meant that I was using a lot of not effective coping strategies, like having way too much coffee or, you know, eating sugary snacks to kind of power through. And then one day I was talking to a colleague in my department who said she always takes her Sundays off from school. She just doesn't touch anything um, school related or work related on Sundays and she spends it with her family. And that just blew my mind. Uh, I couldn't believe somebody could do that. I just didn't know it was allowed. And then I realized I was the one who set my own schedule. So since then, I've been trying to be intentional in uh, carving out time for my family. So we have this tradition of doing game day on Saturdays. And then I make time for other kinds of self-care throughout the week, like, you know, dancing to BTS or, um, you know, with the whole family or doing meditation with my daughter. And that doesn't mean I have it all figured out when it comes to self-care, but I prioritize it. And then I notice if I start to slip and forget about self-care so that I could do better for myself. Thank you, having um, self-care balance is so important. Uh, Howard, would you mind going next? Uh, yes, uh, so I would say the, there was lots of difficult aspects of the whole entire time. I think it, it even started before that, uh, my own fear of what I'm capable of. Um, and then the next thing was deciding whether I should continue to work or just focus on school. Um, I, I believe I chose wisely when I just kind of quit my job and um, focused on school because I, it would have been very difficult for me. Um, while I was in school, I would say that um, the group projects were intimidating and the professors initially were intimidating, but I realized that the professors became my peers afterwards. Um, I still keep in contact with some of them and uh, they've been kind of like my mentors. 
So whatever question I have, I'm able to uh, reach out to them. And uh, all in all, it's been a great experience. Those group projects that I, I was a part of, uh, it taught me a lot about teamwork um, with civilians. And then um, it got me introduced to um, doing, out thing, doing things out there in the community. Uh, thank you, Robert. Um, yes, the prioritizing and the collegiality are wonderful graduate school. Uh, Dr. Sohel, would you please mind going next? Yes, thank you. Um, so, um, so before starting my career journey here in the US, I had a degree in medicine from Pakistan. Uh, so when I started my uh, master's in healthcare administration here at CSUB, um, the most difficult aspect for me um, would be, you know, having to transition from hard sciences, you know, very technical field to social sciences, which uh, requires a very, uh, 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 you know, different skill set in terms of critical writing and academic, um, uh, critical thinking, academic writing, you know, communication and research skills. Um, and, uh, you know, since I did not have a prior exposure to the US um, education system, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, I had to unlearn and relearn. So, and how did I mitigate these challenges? I mean, I followed my faculty's advice, you know, I consulted all the resources that were available here on campus. I remember I used to go to the Writing Resource Center all the time. Um, and I think all these resources became very helpful in the successful completion of my graduate studies. Thank you so much. Um, the next, let's hear about best experiences. Mr. Matthews, can you tell us about the most rewarding aspects of your graduate school experience? Oh, absolutely. This is an easy story for me. It's definitely the network. And, um, you know, I have often shared this story. Um, five years ago, I was about halfway through the MBA program and my wife and I were pregnant with our first child. Well, everything was going great, work, school, the program until disaster struck. And unfortunately, um, we lost our baby. She was in the hospital for three weeks. Um, while it was discovered through the pregnancy that she had a con congenital heart defect um, and, and she, she almost passed away and ended up having to have heart surgery and get an internal cardiac defibrillator. Well, while we were in the hospital, I'm, I'm off work and I really didn't think that I could continue. And so I went to my cohort um, that had been developed over you know, three to four tough classes, operations management and, and, and some others. And I, I told them, I said, I'm out, I, I can't do this. And they looked me in the eye. Um, I remember before driving back down to Cedar sinai and they said, you're not quitting. They said, we're not gonna let you. They said, if we have to do the homework for you and you get back in time for the final presentation, um, we'll do that but we're gonna support you, you're not quitting, we're gonna finish this together. And I had never had a team or a cohort of people that saw me like family that, that provided that level of support. And I, I broke down in tears there and it still makes me wanna cry when I tell that story. Um, but those folks, the network that I, you know, the cohort that I got to study and, and journey with throughout the program, we're still friends to this day. We're like family, we've gone to each other's weddings and um, just been there for each other. That is a lifelong memory and you know experience and relationships that I will carry with me forever. And so far and away, the network was the best memory that I have from the, um, the program itself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the same question uh, for Dr. Gordon. The best experiences and most rewarding aspects of your graduate school experience? Yeah, for me, I think there are many, many rewarding parts of the grad school journey along the way. Um, I'd say one of the most rewarding was definitely the sense of ownership and pride that I developed through the really hard work of digging into my project and really um, having my field, you know, kind of become my own or joining a cohort of, of uh, really accomplished researchers, um, working with great professors, working with other grad students. 
it was really when I, I dove into my master's thesis project, that was really where I kind of felt like I earned my, I earned my way in. You know, I could really call myself a geologist at that point, um, which to me is a compliment I, to other people. Maybe it's, um, you know, whatever. But I was really, really honored um, when, I, when I just dug into my research and I felt like, oh, I've got a space here in this geoscience community. I'm actually developing um, a seat at the table. You know, I'm, I'm kind of earning my way in. And it was tough work. I had to go out to the field like, like many other um, natural science disciplines, whether it's biology, environmental science, and going out to the field and all the hours spent researching and writing, um, all the hard work. I felt like, as I said, the key word there, I think, is, is ownership, you know, and that was really um, it was sweat equity is kind of one of those terms that gets bandied about. And I felt like that's really where uh, it was a very personal experience with great people around me, great geoscience community of professors, grad students, colleagues. But it was really that that sense of hard work, I think, when I dug in and I just I grew to love the, the discipline more, the more and more I wrestled with it and wrangled with it and, and kind of struggled to earn my place and uh, to put out a, a contribution. Hopefully that was in some small way um, original, which is what some graduate research work is, is really meant to be. So I think that was that was my experience. I really say it was that personal ownership for me. Would any other panelists like to address the same question? Sure, I have a response for that. Um, you know, for me, my graduate degree was in Spanish, and so language and linguistics. And I love people, love talking to them, hearing what's important to them. So the best part for me about the graduate experience, maybe was something similar to what Traco was addressing earlier, that community getting to develop those connections across the campus and not just with my colleagues or the faculty in the Spanish uh, master's program, but you know, the undergraduates in Spanish, the students and faculty in the French and Japanese programs, and then across the College of Arts and Humanities. And then I applied for some uh, two research opportunities, um, the student research scholars and the faculty graduate collaborative initiative. Um, so I got to work closely with my faculty mentor Dr. Marianne Parada, and I still research with her today. She's a colleague and friend. And um, also, you know, got, getting to bond with other student researchers and faculty across the entire campus, um, that was so deeply rewarding. It was, you know, one of the best experiences of my uh, graduate um, career. And so I continue to use that same approach to community building and to developing connections in the work that I do now for Kern Behavioral Health and Recovery Services. I'm the cultural competence and ethnic services coordinator. And so that I'm ensuring our agency is always proactively uh, working toward uh, enhancing our diversity inclusion efforts. And so my graduate degree in Spanish enables me to do that to ensure that we have inclusive language access for all of our clients. Any other panelists would like to answer to the same question? No? Um, well, thank you everyone for, uh, for those who are considering graduate education in the near future. What would you recommend that you start doing right now? Ms. Silva, what, what is your advice? Um, I would advise anyone that's interested in starting graduate school to, um, to take an experience or like an internship or like a job related to the field of your interest to really see for yourself if that's kind of the route that you want to take. And I say this because um, I had a degree in political science and then I turned that around and I got my master's degree in um, counseling psychology. So I think for me, it was pivotal that I um, participated in different work opportunities to really delve into different fields. And that gave me the idea of like where I wanted to, to work with. I went the animal field, animal research. I was like, I kind of want to work with people. And then I went to people and I started working in that capacity at a one-on-one -on -one kind of um, environment. And I really love that. So I would say for someone to just explore different field opportunities um, and just kind of notice what it is that you love, what resonates more with you and just take into account, um, you know, do you love what you're doing? Um, is this something that you can see yourself uh, doing in the long term? And if so, to trust that feeling and trust that, you know, that intuition in your gut um, into going into that field per se. That's what I would say. 
Thank you. Yeah, all of your questions. Uh, would any of the other panelists like to answer the same question? I would jump in. Um, so um, this academic year um, is my fifth year teaching with the public policy and administration department. Um, and I always tell my students to um, really take their time and reflect on what they want. Um, not just um, what they want to be, but who they want to be. I think that's really important. Um, think of, you know, pursuing graduate um, studies for your own personal and professional growth. Um, so, you know, once you have a very clear understanding of your both, you know, short-term and long-term goals, do your homework, do your research, ask questions from the people who are already working in the field. So I think this would really help in making the right decision. Yeah, so important to be intentional. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sahel. Um, uh, would another panelist like to answer the same question? Sure, I would offer that. Um, I would say that it might be a really good idea too. And I think just to underscore this point, I, I think that um, maybe one or two others have mentioned is go and talk with the faculty. If you can go and visit with faculty and depending on your specialty or depending on what it is you're looking at for graduate school, um, go ahead and, and have those conversations with faculty and see what you can do to not only get accepted and get kind of ensconced into a program, but um, what kind of research or what kind of project could you do who are the faculty that are looking for students to work with um, and that kind of thing? What kind of funding do they have? Those types of issues. A lot of times you'll find very eager, very friendly, very open um, professors who want to bring in graduate students. And it really helps have those conversations. You know, it just starts with an email. It's, it's not too complicated for any undergrad, undergraduate students who might be with us today. Just start that process. Just start that communication process. And you're probably going to find a lot of open doors and, and welcoming professors who can tell you about what, what the research is that they're doing and what projects they might have for you. Thank you so much. Yes, it's not a journey, a lonely journey, the graduate school experience. So uh, thank you for the advice. Well, hi. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Holbert. Um, I think that for me, I didn't figure that out until I got into the master's degree program. Um, I went into management initially for my bachelor's and I thought that, hey, you know what? I want to be a boss. I want to be a leader. Um, but that didn't work out for me. And then I started searching kind of within myself and kind of looking out there and figuring out what do I want? What am I good at? Well, uh, I'm a leader and uh, I have always been interested in mental health. So clinical social work was something that, you know, was was interesting because of how it was explained to me. You know, I can insert myself in any portion of the field and the school systems, in the corrections, in the state positions, right? In the micro and macro levels. So I did not realize what I wanted until um, my master's degree program. And, you know, I, I didn't think initially that college was for me. So I'm just like, everyone is saying, do your research, figure out what you want to do and make sure that you're happy with that. Um, and if you're not, then do something about it. Thank you so much. Yes, um, this has been such a rich conversation. Before we end, do you have any last words of wisdom for our listeners? Uh, Dr. Gordon, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, again, thank you for having me. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to speak um, with some friends and colleagues here today. I would say in terms of words of wisdom in graduate school, obviously just to underscore this point, make sure to do something that you're passionate about, that you're really interested in. That's really a, a critical piece of the puzzle. But I would say the other thing to add to that is um, maybe envision the graduate school experience like a Venn diagram, right? And so for me, you know, what worked, and I've talked to other people, this kind of worked um, thinking about it this way. If you envision that kind of Venn diagram, if you will, as a little bit of a heuristic or just even like a mental tool, find a piece where there, that's your passion. That's what you love to do, right? And then find another, another part of the Venn diagram um, where it's something that maybe you have a, an aptitude at or you're good at, or you feel like you're growing in that space. Like you have a real aptitude and, and you have a really good chance of being good at that. That's a small piece of it. And I think the other really big piece of it is going to be 
is it something that you can more than likely make a living at? It doesn't mean that you're, you're rich or that you founded a business, you become a billionaire. It just means for most people, I, I think it would be fair to say, it really helps to go into graduate school with clear eyes um, toward developing a skill and a passion that you can make a living at, hopefully, and um, help others via teaching, uh, via giving back to your community, um, being, being part of something of that nature. But for me, that, that was uh, one thing that I'd recommend. Um, maybe try that, that thought process out. Definitely always do what makes you passionate and what you're interested in. Also find out what you're good at. Because all people are, you surprise yourself, all people are good at things they didn't even know that they were good at. Um, and then also, where can you hopefully um, make a living, you know, if, if possible, if that fits into what you're trying to accomplish with, with graduate school. Thank you. Thank you. Those are wise words. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, would you mind? Sure, um, absolutely. Um, I always tell people, um, my colleagues or anyone looking to pursue higher education, that really be prepared to navigate your life alongside those advancements. Because whatever degree you're pursuing at whatever caliber, life is going to happen around it because it takes X amount of years. So always be prepared to navigate with it. Um, don't give up reach out for help, talk about it, use the resources on campus because they have been amazing to me, you know, know everything that's there. Um, they're there to support you and it's really the best experience ever. So just keep going through it and it's gonna be good. Thank you so much. How about Adia? Yeah, thank you. So for me, um, I kind of went through um, my undergraduate right into getting a master's. And that was just six straight years. But during uh, my master's, COVID had started. So I was one semester into my master's program and we all got notified that, you know, the school would be shutting down, everybody moved to a remote location. So for me, a lot of my peers were kind of giving up and they were saying, you know, we're gonna only come back when we have in-person class or, you know, move into a realm of, I'm just gonna take, you know, a year off and focus on working, getting job experience. For me, I saw it as kind of a challenge and, you know, the PPA program to me was so welcoming and so important in, in terms of, you know, not letting me do that. They kind of gave me internships and opportunities, even while COVID was going on. And it made me feel good that they had that consideration for me because I actually came back to the school last year, even though everything was remote. And I was one of the few people who, who actually worked on campus. But this is because of an opportunity that the PPA program gave me. So for, for people that are looking to get into a master's degree kind of in this new COVID era and, you know, working off that, I would just say continue to be passionate about what you're doing and, you know, your program, at least in my experience and, you know, hearing my peers' experiences, you know, the, the teachers, I mean, excuse me, the professors, the faculty there at CACB are there and want you to succeed. I never felt at any time professors in my program wanted me to get an F or they didn't help me or didn't um, do what they could to get me an internship. So I would just say, you know, with everything going on now, continue to go move forward, continue to, you know, go after that internship and use your sources and use your peers. And I graduated this May and haven't looked back and it's because of the professors and mentors that I had in the program. So continue to use your resources would be my biggest strand of advice. Thank you so much, yes. Uh, uh, Denise, uh, I know we are. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm like you, um, Dunny, Dunny, Um, I'm a recent graduate, so I graduated in May. And I think my, my biggest uh, lesson so far, because I'm such a recent graduate, I'm still kind of working in, you know, finding the jobs and in that kind of groove of it all. But I guess for those that are, um, looking into graduate school, what I would say is that learn about um, the different opportunities that you have within your field, because I had a limited perspective of what, because um, I'm, I'm an associate marriage and family therapist, and I had an idea of what um, I could do in my capacity as a therapist, but now I'm learning about so many different opportunities that I can apply to that I had no recognition about um, previous to to like applying to the job and interviewing to the job and learning about it. So with that said, I encourage anyone to just kind of tap into and learn about the different avenues that your 
your uh, degree can take you to so that you have you know the options that are available to you and i i say this from now i have a greater understanding of that um of different positions that are available to me through my degree that i had no idea um so it's really um i think encouraging to know that we have different opportunities once we have a graduate degree that may not have been possible if we had just a undergraduate degree. And I think that can be an encouragement and a motivation for anyone that's the first in their family to graduate, um, to pursue a career, to have a title of some sort, of the sort, um, to knowing the options that are available and um, to dream big and, and um, play, you know, don't play small and, and apply to those big positions that you don't think you're going to get even the interview process itself is a learning experience where you're able to tap into other positions and learn about things that you wouldn't normally um, have learned so that's my advice to anyone um, in that in that regard thank you dr vega yeah uh, so Helen and Australia, would you mind also maybe uh, um Australia, would you like to go first Sure. Words of um, so some words of wisdom, um, for example, in my degree, it's, in, you know, the arts and humanities side. And one thing that I had to do was sort of do my degree my own way. Um, I'm really fascinated by research processes, by looking at peer reviewed journals, by, you know, compiling data like that is super fun to me, which I know, you know, some people might, you know, that's not their fun thing to do on the weekends or something, but I love it. And so when I was going through and doing my degree, I made sure to seek out those opportunities to conduct research and to have, um, you know, funding to do that and to present at, uh, you know, regional, state, um, and um, actually national and international conferences too in my field. Um, which was a little different because that's not as common on the arts and humanities side, that's more of a science side thing. So, you know, doing that and then also um, my specific department, um, you know, when you finish your degree, they had the option to do an exam, but not to do a thesis. And because I want to, um, you know, down the line, get a doctoral degree, I really wanted the experience of writing a thesis also. So I made sure from the very beginning of my time at CSUB to speak to my department chair, to my, um, you know, faculty mentors, and let them know, hey, you know, this is something that's really important to me. And so we were able to, you know, develop a process so that by the time I was at that point, I was able to do a thesis again, you know, my way, which was interdisciplinary, you know, based in um, language, but then also looking at other aspects such as, you know, the sociolinguistic side in terms of how folks use language and what it means to them to use language in a particular space. Um, and I love the arts. So, you know, focusing on the arts too. So, you know, getting to do things in a way that's meaningful to you. I think it's something that Dr. Gordon spoke about a, a little bit ago, um, you know, bringing who you are, your true self, your passions um, to your degree. And then that I think is what's really enabled me to uh, be successful after I graduated because I use those same skills in my job every single day. Thank you so much, Trillian, really wonderful advice. Uh, Dr. Sohel, would you like to have the last word? Um, I'm just gonna, um, uh, be um, um, you know voicing the same opinion as my um, colleagues did you know just um, like I said you know having um, uh, I think reflection for me you know was very important as to you know uh, what I wanted to do um, it wasn't clear until my second year of my um, master's degree where I really decided that I wanted to teach and I wanted to be associated with academia so uh, my career trajectory from um, a medical doctor to an administrator in, um, you know, in healthcare to a doctorate in educational leadership. Um, I mean, all of those decisions were inspired by my own passion of what I wanted to do. And uh, just making decisions according to, you know, I followed my heart on this one and uh, just trying to make sure that, you know, every step I uh, take or every decision I make uh, will eventually um, get me closer to uh, where I want it to be. My gosh, thank you so much for all of the wonderful words of wisdom that you have given us. In my notes, I have uh, uh, some of the elements that I saw in your uh, in your answers. It's never ending enthusiasm, you know, passion, 
to follow your heart. As Dr. Sahel just said, you know, there is a lot of support along the way. And the rest of the day, there will be a lot of wonderful shops, uh, workshops where you will see some of the support being available for you. Also being intentional, having an inquisitive uh, mind to learn and to go beyond, you know, the, uh, accept the challenge. Obviously to put it into, put it into practice. And I would say also to be willing to sacrifice. Uh, be proactive, and uh, especially for those of us who are first generation, it's not easy. And I've really been engaged and uh, involved in research, right? The practical and everything. So all of these are uh, things that I, you know, I wish someone had told me and all of you did for our attendees. So thank you very much. So it looks like we may have time for a few questions, if you don't mind. Uh, Jay, do we have any questions that in the chat from for our alumni and panelists? Yes, Dr. Vega. Uh, Eric Torres has a question. During your master's degree, how would you rate the caliber of work in your courses in general? Any strategies on best practices to thrive in acquiring master's degree? Would any of the panelists like to address the question? Go ahead, Denise, we can hear you. I can answer it. Um, I think for me, um, knowing that everything was going to be done off a laptop for the you know most part of my program, uh, I started to develop days where I would dedicate you know all of my time to just my coursework, right? So if my classes, if I had Zoom class, right, from on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's from five thirty to six forty-five, and then seven to seven eight fifteen, right? What I would do is dedicate that Thursday. I mean, excuse me, that Wednesday and that Monday to doing all my papers, all my work, because I'm somebody that, um, like Australia said as well, tried to find a good work-life balance and find that happy medium. So I can not only get through the master's program from a COVID perspective, but I can also prioritize myself, right? So I think, you know, my biggest advice for that and the best strategy for me that worked was doing all my work in that week so I could enjoy the rest of the week carefree and start to disconnect from that because I felt it led to some of my best papers and it led to some of my you know best work being done when I've had that time to come and recoup mentally and then I can come back and be refreshed and work on these papers work on these tests and so like I said it, it's it's a good strategy that worked for me um, and I, I was able to get through the program um, not with ease, but, you know, it was a lot easier to me because I was able to find that work-life balance. So finding and definitely prioritizing your worth is definitely something that could really help you and make you have kind of a, a refreshed mindset when you, you know, go week by week. So. Thank you, uh, Dion. Um, how about any else from our panelists? You know, the, uh, you know, being professional when you're graduate right? status, right? It's like you have to go to work, you know, you do your you strategize how do you your work and you stay stick to the schedule. So uh, I remember never missing classes myself. <laughs> and those little things, baby steps make a big difference. Uh, do you have another question, Jay, uh, for our panelists? Yes, so Aileen has a question. What is the atmosphere of graduation school is like? What is the graduation? Uh, say that again, please. Atmosphere? The environment of the graduation school, what is it like? Okay. Would anyone like to answer the question? Maybe what happens? Sure. I have a, you know, a this was actually a big um, hurdle for me at first. So the atmosphere for graduate school when I first started, um, my degree, my major was so small. And a lot of the folks who were in my cohort actually, you know, were teachers at local schools. And so I never really got to see them very often, you know, we maybe would see each other at class and then everybody would have to go because we were all doing separate things. And so initially I had kind of this feeling of disconnect, but then I tried to be intentional in building those connections, not just with my colleagues, but also with everyone else. And I think it's, it's specifically, you know, trying to be intentional and making sure that you have connections you know, with people in your department, with your professors, because everyone, you know, we're all kind of in it together, right? We're working toward getting our degree. You know, if it's your master's, you're working towards getting your master's. The undergraduates look to you 
And so they're working to, to get their bachelor's, but even then you can have camaraderie, you can have some of that shared experience with them. And the faculty have been through it. So they understand, you know, the, the whole factors of, you know, like trying to balance spending time with your family, trying to balance working on, um, you know, your research. Um, and then also I specifically sought to, um, you know, try to work almost at a professional level. And so when I would hear, uh, you know, faculty talk about, you know, making sure that the research you do for a class um, is something that you can publish or that you can present at a, at a conference. Um, so I tried to, you know, focus on an atmosphere that was about connection with peers and then also about being professional in my uh, chosen field. Um, when you made the decision to attain graduate school, what factors influence your choice? Absolutely, thank you um, for mentioning that. So <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of things that I was thinking about. I was a working professional, have been in the corporate world for about 12 years when I started thinking about grad school. And so um, I had a friend who told me, so I, I had pretty good um, GRE scores. And he said, you know, don't, don't go to CSUB. He said, go to UCLA or USC or somewhere else and um, develop a stronger, you know, a, a network outside of the area. It, it'll catapult you to, um, you know, higher level positions and better opportunities. Well, I did a lot of research. And so the first thing was this, I thought, where do I want to be grounded? Um, you know, where do I want to, to kind of plant roots? Because that's where I want to learn and grow and build this network. And then I also looked at the, the qualifications for the graduate programs themselves. And I have this cool little mug, CSUB MBA program. And you can see here, it says AACS, uh, um, CSB accreditation, which is the same accreditation as Stanford, as Harvard MBA, as UCLA, as USC, but for about a quarter of the cost. And so when I thought about the return on investment and um, the opportunity to grow roots here, but to get the same caliber of education as all of these other great programs, I thought I'd be an idiot to not go to a local school where I can really develop a, a, a strong network with local professors, get opportunities in the community that I love and get the same accreditation or a, a, you know, a master's degree with the same accreditation um, as all of these other high level globally renowned entities. And, and so to me, those were some major factors that I considered when I made the decision to go to CSUB specifically and it's paid off. Um, I love being here. I, I love the education that I was able to get and the return. I think I, I probably would have had similar or the same opportunities um, if I were in LA, but I just like Bakersfield. So it's just been great getting to be here and to grow those roots here and get that same caliber of education. Yeah, thank you, Trey. I'm very impressed that you have, you have been very tactical in your approach to grad school. You know, uh, the question, how did you get that from? Or can you say a little bit about that? <laughs> I'm sorry, you said, how did I get the mug? To be very tactical about how you approach oh. grad school. Well, that's just, you know, some of that is just part of who, who I am as a person, um, you know, trying to be strategic. I, I really try to live my life uh, based on principles. And one of those principles is starting with the end in mind. Uh, it's one of the seven habits of a highly successful person, I think habit number two. And, and so when you look out at, you know, 80 years old, what you want your legacy to, to be or to have been, well, it's important to, you know, kind of identify what, if, what will the future look like for me or what I want that future to look like, and then you back your way into it. And I had made a decision um, back in 2012, my wife and I, she had just gotten tenure um, at her community college, and we said, we're staying here. We love this community. And so I said, well, now I want to lead and have a, a legacy in Bakersfield, in Kern County. What does that look like if I'm not going somewhere else? And so that was part of what um, helped to drive that strategic tactical approach to the grad school decision. The other thing, and, and I did want to share this a couple of questions ago, but I know a lot of people who are considering grad school, they want to lead. And so I think one of the biggest things that you can take away from any graduate program 
um, is, you know, leaders do two things well. They win hearts and they win minds. That means you've got to have technical competence that Dr. Gordon has spoken to. And um, uh, I believe is Dr. Estrella um, Amaro Jepson. You've got to have that technical competence, but you also have to know how to win people's hearts. And that's where the networking and the culture, understanding all of those things come into play as well. And CSUB, that, you know, any grad program at CSUB, I think will deliver on those two elements and really strengthen your personal brand and your, your abilities to lead effectively wherever that is, whatever industry that's in, whether it's in the community. And so when I thought about it from that perspective too, I thought, will I be able to lead better if I go to UCLA or USC versus CSUB? No, um, I'll be able to lead as effectively because I'll have a stronger network locally. I'll be able to you know, capture hearts faster if I have relationships with the people locally and the professors and all of that. Um, but the technical piece is gonna be pretty close or almost the same. So from a leadership perspective, if you want to be effective, I think this is probably the best option for those who want to have a legacy in Kern County. Wow. Thank you so much for that terrific advice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's do just one last question. Uh, Jay, would you mind the uh, last question, please? Yes. Uh, any advice for students who want to pursue a master's degree but feel like right after undergraduate is too soon? I believe... Uh, Denise Silva wants to answer this question. Yeah, um, I took on that, uh, you know, I graduated from CSUB and I took a couple of years before starting my uh, graduate program. And I recommend it to anyone that's um, kind of wanting to take a pause in between uh, starting their program from undergraduate to graduate. And I say this because in between my time, I was able to travel, I was able to take on different work opportunities. And that's what really led me to want to pursue uh, a graduate degree to be a marriage and family therapist. So I think that time that, you know, in between that interim uh, can be a time of self-exploration. And I think when we are college students, we dedicate a lot of our um, identity and who we are to the status of being a student. And I think, Outside of being a student, I think it's important for us to know who we are outside of that status itself. And I think it gave me that opportunity to really um, understand who I was and really dive into those deeper questions of what did I want to do with my life and how do I want to serve my community and how can I give back um, in, a, in a position that is also in alignment with my own values. So I think I figured out kind of my values and what that was and I sought out a career that was in alignment with, with my truest self. Um, so I advise anyone to take that break to kind of give yourself the time to explore your hobbies, your interests outside of a student you know, status. And I don't think we have a lot of time as students when we're juggling so many responsibilities to really give to ourselves. And I think that's the challenge between that work-life balance. Um, it's a lot of work as a student. And I think it's, it's um, really, really difficult to, to give back to yourself and take care of yourself. And um, I definitely recommend it if, if that's something that you want. And there's no shame in taking that break. And I think oftentimes we feel pressure to do so. We feel like that's what is needed. And we're in this timeline that we have to race to a certain time to accomplish certain things in life. And there's no such thing. We're all on our own path and we have to go accordingly to our timing um, and respecting our process, I think is important there. Well, what a great answer. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, no need to rush life. Um, well, we have a surprise for you momentarily, but I wanted to give Dr. Jackson, since you know she's here, uh, she was the first generation too, if she wants to add anything that we may not have, uh, you know, address. Or any words of sure. wisdom. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vega. Um, uh, I, um, I am first generation. I'm first in my family to go to college. And um, uh, also, you know, first in my family to go to graduate school. Um, I had no idea I'd end up where I was, but um, many of you, uh, I've just been following my passions and building my skill set, and um, so, so grateful to be in the position I'm in because edu higher education 
um, really was the avenue for giving me opportunities that other people in my family hadn't had. Um, and I feel really uh, proud that my experience going to college and going to grad school has inspired other members of my family to get an education. Um, uh, you know, one thing that happened uh, is after I graduated from college and started my graduate study, my mother decided, hey, wait a minute, maybe I could go to college too. And while I was in grad school, my mom uh, uh, pursued her bachelor's degree. Um, and uh, that was that was pretty, pretty exciting for us as a family. Um, and uh, some of my younger cousins have um, also gone to college. Uh, one of my cousins, um, actually went to law school, and she's now a very successful lawyer in Austin, Texas. And I loved being able to talk to her about her experience when other people in my family weren't there to have gone through that. And so she could always reach out to me and say, like, hey, I'm thinking about going to college or I'm thinking about going to law school. How do I do that? You know, what do, what do I need to do? And I said, you know, I can tell you how I did it because no to, you know, give me advice about how to, how to do it. And I really had to sort of stumble through all of that. Um, but now a lot of my children um, are going to college and they are reaching out to me. So I've got, you know, a one cousin's daughter who's going to school in Mississippi and she's reached out to me and I've been able to um, help her along the way. I've got a, another cousin's daughter is living in Memphis. Um, and she recently contacted me trying to figure out like what kind of grad program would be the best fit for her. And I've been able to give her some advice about that. And I just, um, there's nothing, there's nothing that feels better than, than helping others find their way um, in, in my opinion. And that's why I dedicated my career to higher education. Um, uh, but it's, it's, it's hard, um, but it's also really, really rewarding. Um, I see, um, Hobert, you have your hand up. I, I, I imagine you have some things you wanted to share. Yeah, I was going to answer the, the previous question. Um, for those individuals who want to take a break, um, I can use myself an ex as an example. I, I took a break after I got my bachelor's. And it was uh, after um, a few failures where I applied for many positions and I didn't get the job where I, I looked for um, towards a master's degree program. And, uh, you know, now I'm working with doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists in the mental health field. <laughs> I'm now being a part of this, this panel, right? So we don't usually realize what we're capable of because of fear, fear that what are we, are we good enough? And so um, take a break if you need to, but if you're not happy where you're at, then, you know, you'll never be as young as you are today. So go for it. You know, that's something that will never be taken away from you is your education. Robert, I agree that, you know, education gives us hope, gives us a gift to ourselves, a gift to others. And I think Dr. Jackson spoke to that. And those of you who know that she's very giving, she does everything she can for all of our students. And even our panelists, all of you who are here, you're giving back. Um, give you time for one more question maybe maybe we do is there anything that we left out that should be on the table so it was just mainly being first generation as well my father had a high school education my mom didn't finish high school um I knew for myself I wanted more and I never considered myself the smartest guy in high school especially difficulties growing up right so when I applied to CSUB the expectations for me from a family perspective were like, let's just see how this goes for this guy, right? So I end up doing a bunch of stuff at the school, participating in many things and getting my undergraduate. And I went directly straight into uh, my master's program. And for me, uh, I learned from my friends who had graduated previously that, you know, the positions you want, and Traco alluded to this as well, leadership positions from an employer perspective, they look at grad school as an extra step that you took as somebody who wants to be a leader, who wants to get more educated, who wants to be in different, you know, parts of the company. 
So I understood that I had that working knowledge of seeing my friends not being able to get certain jobs because they didn't have that extra step of education. So for me, I went directly into it. And uh, I wish I could have taken a little bit of time, but I knew for myself, I, I looked at it from, you know, let's just get it done. But I didn't have a bad experience in, in graduate school. I didn't have uh, an experience that I, you know, felt like I didn't have time to do the things that I needed to do, especially during COVID. So I know um, for anybody that's going into it, there's no right or wrong answer. You can take the time, which I wish I would have done. Or if you feel like you just want to get it out the way, going into a program is you find it more enticing and you develop peers and you develop working relationships and it's a great experience as well. So I feel like uh, any answer for that as far as going into a program or taking time off is the right answer. It just uh, depends on who you are and what you want. But I know for me, uh, I'm the only one in my family to get this done and it's something that I hold very valuable to myself and hopefully I can inspire the rest of my family to like uh, uh, Ms. Jackson said as well, get back into college and pursue higher education on that level. So thank you, Jay. Um, I, we already given you a round of applause. I'll give you another one just to show my gratitude. And 